Welcome here to Accident Reflections and uh, during this video I'm going to talk about a helicopter accident. It's Bell 206 and uh, they actually crashed into a zip line. But let's carry on and have a look at this one. Uh, not a very clear picture but there's only one that got good kid of the actual helicopter that was in the accident. And the first point to have a look at is the relevant history. Well, the, the points is that the pilot was on board alone. There was nobody else with him. And he got airborne from Wonneboom and he was flying on his way to a bush lodge passing Pilansburg and Sun City. Now, at Sun City is where you've got this zip line from the top of the mountain down to the bottom and he actually flew into this cable. So he was sighted uh, of fl flying low level and I think the way that they they did get hold of the GPS they uh, had people that was also looking at the aircraft and they saw well they said approximately 330 feet and I imagine that's the height that the cable was above the ground where they actually did the the impact. The helicopter impacted the zip line and fell to the ground near the foot of the mountain and it was a fatal accident. Just to highlight here, okay, this, this was obviously the result and here you've got the zip line, a, a very good um, mountain going down and a very, very clear picture here of the zip line. Now, when we get to the accident sequence, I know that we're going to take uh, have a look here at the picture. So I might as well get onto the picture for starters. And here we're looking at this here is the site where the zip line starts. And here at the bottom, around about here is where its final track comes. It goes down and then uphill again and then it travels and comes back. And this is at that round spot there at the bottom is where they, you know, get the people out of the harness that they went down this. It's, it's the fastest zip line, I think, in South Africa. All right. But the cable that runs from there to there, the helicopter was coming in from this side, flying past when the accident happened. So if I look at take off from Vonneboom to the bush, flight 330, zip line, no attempt to avoid. That is the point that I just wanted to show out. He was cruising. Now, at the bottom here, there's a picture of uh, the airspeed indicator that is just over. It's about 82, 83 uh, knots that was on the clock there. And it stayed there where the accident was. So he was in the cruise and there was no serious deterioration or increase of the speed at that moment. So... Um, all right, so what is the argument? First of all, let's just get the facts in there. And the argument is uh, normally when I talk about the argument, it is everything that we can use to get to, uh, we can find out, you know, what was the cause of the accident and what can we learn from there? Well, it was good weather and the zip line is part of Polansburg uh, on the plates, therefore, it, it is mentioned as a hazard. In other words, the information for the zip line is there. It was also mentioned that the, the destination was not Pilansburg for the pilot. So that is one of the probable reasons why he didn't look at uh, Pilansburg. Uh, well, the flight at 300 feet, come on. 300 feet in a helicopter, you are flying over all obstacles. But you see, a zip line is not a loose standing obstacle. Not in the normal sense. And you really cannot think of a zip line when you think of um, cables for high tension wires and stuff like this. This is a, a, a total different monster. Um, I imagined that he probably knew about the zip line. It, it, this is a, a PPL. He's got over 500 hours. He's been flying the helicopter for a lot. Nothing wrong with the, the guy. And he's been past that area. So mm, it's, it, 
I, I get the feeling that he knew about that and that he basically thought that he was far enough away from the mountain. But anyway, just far enough from the mountainside, probably did not see the cable in time to avoid it, and the cable is not visible on a mini or, as I said here, in most conditions. So that is something that really uh, I, I think is important. Just here on the side, a, a better picture here of the zip line, and you can see they've got wings on there. This thing is going flipping fast. And here it goes down. And you can see there in the far is where it actually comes. And this is where the people come, uh, where they get off. So it, it must have been somewhere at that level there where the crossing was. If, if you look here on the left-hand side, I put uh, on the length, this is where the cable turns. That's where the people get off. That is where the people get on. And this is the spot where they said the accident took place. So at that place, the cable was then uh, still 330 foot above ground. If you, uh, eventually the cable comes to within a few meters of the ground, and that is what's giving the adrenaline rush to the people. But the pilot was just not far enough away from the mountain. All right. So first of all, just a, a couple of comments, but before I get you, because you're going to look here, but there is exactly the same zip line. But now there's an aircraft hanging on it. And here are guys working their way to get the uh, occupants out. My goodness. In other words, I said at the top here, it's the same zip line, but it's a different victim. And this is obviously the end result of the victim here. Right, what? It's a valid PPL, 530 hours. That's pretty good. Our uh, perception of reality is seldom uh, a mirror image to the actual state. So we believe the reality as we perceive it. It is not necessarily totally in sync with the, let me call it the actuality out there. All right. There's no, normally a little bit of a delta. And if the delta is big enough, then it is possible to end up in the same space or place as something else. And as you know from normal uh, physics, you can't occupy the same space at the same time. If we are comfortable that there is no obstacle, all right, then there is probably no obstacle. To become aware through planning and uh, research, we discover that which we did not know. I have to just say something else. You will not know that you didn't know unless you did planning, which will reveal you that which you did not know. And then you can go and do the research. It's a very important point because I think a lot of times we think that um, it, it is not important. In this very case, I, I, I don't think the... The guy knew about the cable. He wasn't going to read up about it again. That's truly what I think about this. And this was just a judgment error. Now, I've been at this place in a helicopter. I've been in this place in an aircraft. And in both cases, I actually flew very well knowing with this. But over the crest here at the top to look down and to see, you know, when could I see the cable? How could I see the cable? And you are just lucky if you see that. When you're going down, there is a certain height where the cable actually blends with the background and it totally, totally disappears. All right. Normally, you won't expect a cable or something in your way 300 feet. Well, next to a mountain, that's where you will find the cables. We fly into things because they're there. Oh. They were there first. Obstacle strikes, strikes makes up, well, you know, I wanted to say 70 to 80, probably more closer to 80% of accidents is helicopters striking something. And a, a lot of the times we just didn't look out. We knew about, but we couldn't pick it up. We thought we were safe, but we couldn't pick up the cues to make sure that we uh, didn't end up with either our tail road or whatever in the same space. 
Now that same zip line at, at more uh, tragedies to come, I say zip lines are alongside mountains and some span between high ridges and they are flying traps. I know. Uh, many years ago I was flying from one A to B, I was about 500 feet above the ground and there was this line right in front of me. I couldn't go over, I dumped, helicopter went underneath, lucky. What did a, a, a cable, a thick cable like this, it was earlier years when they were working on, uh, I think they were mining some stuff that it was used for. I didn't expect it there. I didn't go and read up in the annals to see whether there was something. So sometimes this is a, well, sometimes you're lucky. I think I was lucky. I think this guy was just a little bit unlucky. So recommendations. Firstly, we must know that we probably do not know. And then plan to discover our shortages. All right. Look. When I talk about these things, I'm not saying this is the case in this exact accident. This is just a reminder. So this wouldn't have worked for this pilot because there was a misjudgment or he thought he was okay anyway. That's what I personally think. But I need to get the picture over that. Remember, you cannot go into uncharted territories. I don't think he went into uncharted territories. Just didn't know exactly. Zip lines do not fall in the same category as high tension wires and other uh, mast and obstacles. So think about them slightly different. Only fly low after a higher inspection uh, of the intended low flying area. Really? It's all the time like this. And we write it in the procedures to say, okay, you're going to do some low flying. I know you're going to do some low flying. First of all, get trained how to do the, the no flying. What is it that you look out for? How do you set yourself up? Okay, how do you actually look out when you're doing that? But you can only start doing that if you already cleared from a higher level that that area is actually void of flying traps. All right, wires and cables are normally not visible. So please, the pylons are, but you know, if you look at the left here, how would you put, uh, there is the pylon. It's very, very difficult. Well, th that's just a, a mast up there. And then I think the cable runs somewhere there. In, even on this picture, it's very difficult to see. All right. Now, uh, I didn't want to say just helicopters, uh, fixed wings as well. But flying at 1,000 feet AGL, Above ground is recommended for obstacle clearance, turbulence avoidance, and engine failure reaction. So, I don't want us to learn just from this that we shouldn't fly into stuff. But remember, if you fly at a height where there can't be stuff like that, you can't fly into them. So think. If there is a cable or something, fly over the pylon. If you know there's a zip line, I remember when I went to this very place. It, 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 it's nerve-wracking, okay? until you've got your ground markers and your, you physically looked out, uh, look out and you, you've seen uh, what you had to do. And the art of low flying must be taught. All right. So all that I can say is sometimes it sucks. I think in this case, that's one of those times. However, the rest of the SOPs, the planning, and how we make sure that we are safe, still up to us. The only person that cannot come back from death when it happens to you is yourself. Until the next one.